Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on essays, tracts, speeches, and other writings in American literature. So as we look at essays, tracts, speeches, and other writings in American literature, what we're really trying to understand is that the writing should be understood as a bridge between the author and the reader. And what I mean by that is first person narratives, you know, as, as an extension of first person narratives, you do have a, a potential attempt to convince and get the reader to believe what you are saying about your own experience. But as we move into essay, you know, as we move into this bunch of readings, these nonfiction ri uh, writings, what we're dealing with is the writing is an attempt between the uh, is with the author and the uh, is by the author to get the reader to understand, believe, or be exposed to something. And it's no longer grounded in the author's own experience, but it's often grounded in arguments, in reason, in some kind of attempt to provide information and lead the, lead the reader down a particular path. And we see this in all sorts of different types of writing and I would say word-focused content. So you have letters and you have sermons and you have treaties and essays and speeches. Right, all of these things are, are conveying words with important meaning for an audience. And they are largely argument focused. And what I mean by that is there is a point to prove, there is an attempt to convince the reader of something. And so these writers do this in a variety of different ways. And if you've, you know, if you've taken College Writing 1 and College Writing 2, uh, you learn about the different ways of argumentation. And so these are the type of things in which writers are looking to their audience and trying to convince them, trying to lead them down a particular path. That path is sometimes not great. In fact, there's many writers out there who could, you know, who potentially purposely or not mislead their readers. And so as a reader, you really want to be aware of that. You really want to be critical of anybody trying to convince you of anything, including me. So these are often meant you know, th these writings are often meant to convince, to inspire, to move, um, to anger, right? So, so different, writing, different writings that we look at in, in this section are really trying to get to the reader in a, in a profound way. So what are some of the questions we want to be asking and we want to think about? So here's that frame of questions we want to focus on as we move into these, these types of writings. What's the author's purpose in writing this? Again, it's a, it's a question that we don't always ask right off the bat, and yet we should, as we step into a writing, we should be asking, well, what's the author trying to do? Right? What's your deal? What is your purpose? What, why do you want me to read this? What, what are you trying to sell me? Because it is a sell. Within that, or an extension of that, is what, so it's what is the author trying to sell? And then kind of a subset of that is what is the author's central argument? That is, what is the author trying to sell and how is he or she trying to sell it to me? Right? What is their driving force for me to do whatever it is or believe whatever it is they're offering up? And one question to remember is you want to ask who is the author trying to convince? Because again, many of the authors that we're reading in this course did not write for us. They were writing for other populations, for other audiences, audiences who may be long dead or maybe audiences that are still alive. But they are not writing to convince us per se, but it's worth us thinking about, you know, can they convince us? And it's worth, uh, worth us thinking about who was their in initial audience? Who were they trying to convince? Why does the author feel the need to convince this particular audience? So again, it's who are they trying to convince and why are they trying to convince them? So if we look at the abolitionist writings, right? who are the abolitionists trying to convince? Are they trying to convince other abolitionists? Are they con trying to convince the people that were pro-slavery? Probably not. The people that were pro-slavery were pretty strong you know, in believing in pro-slavery, you know, in, in, pro in, in believing in slavery. They might have been trying to convince the people that were on the fence, the, you know, the, the, the people that were in the middle ground that weren't really sure one way or another. And that's what you often find with these, is they're not trying to convince the people who are diametrically opposed to them, but they're trying to convince the people who are not entirely certain. 
And so they're using all of their tools and their, you know, their, their argumentative tool belt to get them over on their side or to be inspired and to believe in whatever it is they're trying to convince them of. How does the author validate his or her argument? So what evidence, what proof, what justification does the author use? Does the author look for moral uh, validation? So it might go to the Bible or might go to, you know, for the sake of humanity. Right in modern era is one of the one of the ones I always love, and um, by love I mean just really dislike because of how people wield it um, all the time in order to win arguments. Is the uh, the think about the children argument right? So anything that could be potentially in any minute way dangerous to children is therefore vanquished from from a discussion. Um, and I don't know, I mean, personally, I don't know if I believe that, but I, I find it a troublesome argument because it limits really, if we restrict, uh, the logical extension of that is, of course, if we restrict everything that could be harmful for children, then we really have very little besides soft, squishy uh, bean bags. And even those could probably be dangerous to children. So how does the author validate his or her argument? Notice I just gave you an argument there. What was I doing? I don't know. You tell me. What was I, what was I trying to convince you of? And what was I using as validation and justification? Where do the author's argument, where does the author's argument fall short? Where are there contradictions? Where is there seem to be things untrue? And so again, you want to, you never want to take an author at his or her word. You want to challenge them. You want to question what it is that they're saying. You want to see if there's problems with it. You want to see what their evidence is. And I would encourage you to not just accept the evidence as evidence. People offer up fake evidence all the time. Think about statistics, right? People love to offer up the most random statistics, whether they're real or not. You know, I've heard that from at least 50 people, right? There's a statistic right there. I've heard that from at least 50 people. Is that an actual statistic? No, it's just me talking out of the side of my mouth. So you want to challenge their, th what they have for evidence and what they, you know, really identify their shortcomings. All right, those are the major things you want to be thinking about. Again, you don't want to trust the, the, re the, the writer. You want to continually think about who he or she is writing for uh, and why this author is, has so much at stake at trying to convince that audience of whatever it is he or she is trying to convince. All right, thank you very much and see you in the next video.